Hello everybody and welcome to the Chemistry 121 Supplemental Instruction Series of videos. Today we're going to be talking about density. Density, you say? Yes, density. How's it going, Kevin? Not bad. My name is Kevin Martin. I'm and Joey Smokey. And we talk about density. Yes. So density, what is it? Well... What was that for? You're dense. I guess I am. Yeah. So, things have weight, obviously. I mean, this pen has a weight. You have a weight, I have a weight. Kevin obviously has a weight. So, lots of it. Yeah, yes, lots of it. So, depending on how closely packed things are inside objects like you and me and Kevin in this pen, it's going to determine how dense it is. So, for example, Kevin is a little bit heavier than me, so therefore he's more dense than I am. You know, he has a little bit more weight, more stuff packed in there. So, that's what density is. It's basically just how much stuff is packed into a space. Mm -hmm, makes sense. Okay, so the important thing for you guys for chemistry is that when you're working with different, you know, elements or compounds or whatever, is that very same density that will be important to you for, you know, things like unit conversions or talking about weights or reactions or whatever. It's basically, it's pretty important. You'll be using it quite a bit. So what would you be using it for? Well, if you think about it for a minute, let me go ahead and draw a picture because as you know, I like pictures. Pictures yeah, are cool. cool. <laughs> so I'm going to draw an orange beaker. Okay. Okay, and I got blue pants. So let's get rid of it. There we go. We're going to fill this beaker with some water. Okay. Okay, and then we'll say that I have a lump of something, some chemical, something brown. Coal. Coal. That works. Yeah. And I'm going to drop it in here. Okay. Okay. I have a lump of coal placed in the water. Now, what happens is that when you, and as you know this, I mean just from life experience, when you put something into a glass or a beaker or whatever, the water level is going to rise. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? So what's going to happen when we insert this lump of coal into the beaker, the water level will rise up to there. Okay? okay now, now, why is that? That's because of displacement. Oh. Right? Because when you insert something into water, it's basically shoving the molecules of water out of the way so that object can drop in there, and therefore the water level is going to rise. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. Now, this lump of coal has volume, just like the water does. So, at the same time, this lump of coal has weight. It has mass. It has a gram weight. So, it has both a volume amount and a gram amount. Okay. And those two can be related through what's called density. Oh. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense. All right. Now, how are they related, though? How are they related? So, when you look at density, the formula for density, I'll oh, grab there for a and we'll do that. Density, capital D, is equal to mass over volume. Density is the ratio of the mass of an object to the volume of an oh, object. Oh, so that's what it is. Okay, that's that makes what it is. sense. Okay, so if we have this lump of coal, we would stay, we could weigh it on a scale in the lab, and we'll say this lump of coal weighs, oh, I don't know, 3.9 grams. Okay. Okay? Now, how would you get the volume out? I mean, we can't, well, it's the lump of coal, it's solid. We can't, like, pour liquid out of it and see how much liquid was in there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You'd have to, like, take a ruler and, like, measure all the little bumps and things. I don't know. That'd be, that'd be kind of hard to do. Yeah. So, how, 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 would, how would you find that volume? Well, there's this cool term that we used earlier in the video. Oh? Displacement. Imagine this. Whenever a boat's in the water, it pushes some water out of the way. We say it displaces some water. See? Displace, place away. You with me? So it's as though this model boat of science were making a hole in the water shaped like this. Now take a look. This is the aquarium of science. And it's filled right to the brim. As the boat settles in, it displaces some water. It runs over the rim, down the scutter, into this pitcher. Now, the model boat of science displaced this water. In fact, all boats displace water. In fact, everything you put in the water displaces some water. Here, watch. Now, watch this. I'm going to place the boat on the scale, which right now is in balance. Now, the boat takes it out of balance. Now, I'm going to put the water that we displaced earlier on the other side.
see? It just balances. Now, watch this. Take the displaced water, take the water, put it back in the hole we had earlier. That's one. Here's the second. Look. It fits exactly. Isn't that cool? Science rules. You mean that's how you find the volume? That's how you find the volume. Really? Exactly. So when we look at, we'll say, the speaker, before we drop the lump of coal in this first line of water, we'll say it was just a straight 25 milliliters. Okay. Okay? And we'll say when we drop the lump of coal in there, the water level rise to, we'll say, 32 milliliters. Okay. Okay? Now, the difference between those two, this space right there, that's the amount of water that was displaced, and that is the volume of the coal. Oh, I get it, because the coal displaces the water, that it basically pushes that water up, and then right. the amount is pushed up is equal to the volume of the coal. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Right, so if we just take the difference between those, it's 7 milliliters, so we know that the volume of this lump of coal is 7 milliliters. Okay. Okay, now the calculated density, it's mass over volume, so 3.9 grams divided by 7 milliliters, I'll go grab the calculator again. 3.9 divided by 7 equals 0.557. Okay. Okay? So we're going to have... I hate these chisel tip pens, just so you know. I, they're annoying to me. Anyway. Gigawatts. <laughs> Let's see what I say. 0.557. Okay. Now remember, we still have these grams and milliliters units there, so we're going to say grams per milliliter, okay? okay? Now, say I had a density and a mass and I wanted to find volume, how would I go about that? We'll cover that in just a little bit. Okay. Okay? First, I want to make sure to point out to these guys here um, that the actual number value for density, the 0.557, is related to the number of grams. It's also important to realize that it's always per one milliliter. Okay? Because okay. density is used for unit conversions. If you want to talk about something in terms of a volume as opposed to a gram or something like that, you're going to be using density to convert between those two. So remember that. And remember from our previous videos that we did arguing about gigawatts versus gigawatts as well as unit conversions. I remember. Yes. You want to think about your units and all that. So remember that. The actual number goes to the grams. Milliliters is always one milliliter. Okay. Okay. So, you're asking about if you're given two out of these three things, how you find the other. Yeah, like if you, you're given a density, you know density, and like, say you measured the mass on a scale, how would you find the volume? How would you find the volume? Well, basically, you're just going to use your math skills. Oh, math. Right? Yes, exactly. Uh -oh. So, I know, we all like using calculators, it's easy. So, basically, all you're going to do is just treat it like an algebraic problem, like 3x plus 7 equals 0, you've solved for the variable x. So in this case, if we're given density and mass, V is our variable, so we just isolate it and solve for it. Okay. Okay? So we do that just by manipulating this equation around. If we multiply both sides by V, we would get what our mass is. Mass equals density times the volume. Okay. Or if we want to get the volume, it's going to be density divided by the mass. Because you're dividing both sides by volume from this one, right? Exactly. Makes sense. Yep. That's why, we, that's why I took all those algebra classes. Exactly. So that's how we solve for one of them if you're only given two. Okay. Okay? But remember, the more practical reason for density is this sort of thing, stuff that you would do in lab, plus using it like this as a conversion factor. All right. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Inertia is a property of matter. T minus seven seconds. Bill, 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 Bill